Have you ever stopped to think about where our galaxy ends? It might seem too soon for humanity to venture beyond the Milky Way, but the truth is, curiosity has never respected boundaries. Even within our own galaxy, there are still regions we barely understand, including our very own solar system, tucked away in a modest corner of this vast spiral structure. So, sit back and get ready. We're about to explore what lies beyond the Milky Way, what awaits us past the galactic frontier, and which mysteries surround us in this immense universe. The first question that comes up is, where exactly does the Milky Way end? And where does the space between galaxies begin? Surprisingly, this isn't a question with a clear-cut answer. Even with all our technological advancements, astronomers still struggle to fully map our galaxy. We're located in a peripheral region, far from the center, in a small spiral arm known as Orion, practically on the edge of the galactic disk. Because we're so far from the core, we've ended up understanding other galaxies better than our own. It was only in recent years, for example, that we discovered the Milky Way is actually a barred spiral galaxy, meaning it has a central bar-shaped structure, not just spiral arms. Even the size of the Milky Way is still under review. For decades, it was estimated to be about 100,000 light years in diameter, but more recent studies suggest that number could be up to twice as large. In other words, we're not even sure how long it would take to leave the Milky Way aboard a spaceship. But there is a clue. As we travel beyond the galactic disk, that flat band where most of the young stars are concentrated, we notice the density of stars begins to drop. The stars become more sparse, and this increasing separation tells us we're truly heading out. That's when the real adventure begins. Once we cross the edge of the disk, we enter a region known as the galactic halo. Unlike the flat part where most stars reside, the halo is spherical in shape and divided into different layers. The first of these is the stellar halo, filled with ancient stars and globular clusters. These clusters are groups of stars bound together by gravity, forming spherical structures that orbit the center of the Milky Way. Scientists believe many of them are remnants of smaller galaxies that were absorbed by the Milky Way billions of years ago. Their stars are extremely old and have very low metal content, suggesting they formed in the early days of the universe. Despite their beauty, it's unlikely we'd find life there. The high density of stars makes the environment gravitationally unstable, which hinders planet formation, and thus, life as we know it. But some curious phenomena do occur out there. One of the most intriguing are the so-called blue straggler stars. These stars stand out for being brighter and more massive than the others in the same cluster, which defies the usual logic of stellar evolution. After all, more massive stars should have short lifespans and already be dead. So what are these luminous active stars doing in a place where star formation ended billions of years ago? One possible explanation is that they're the result of two smaller stars merging, a kind of stellar recycling. Even so, the mystery remains, since these stars are only two or three times more massive than their neighbors. Very different from the giant blue stars of the galactic disk, which can be dozens of times larger than the sun. After admiring the globular clusters and their enigmas, our journey continues. Now, the spacecraft crosses the galactic corona, a layer made up of extremely hot gas clouds that envelop the Milky Way like a cocoon. The temperature here can exceed 1 million degrees Celsius. But don't worry, the matter is so sparse that it would be like passing through an empty oven. Hot, yes, but harmless. But the most mysterious stage of our journey is about to begin. After the galactic corona, we enter the dark matter halo, an invisible, untouchable region with an enormous gravitational presence. It's estimated that this halo spans up to 2 million light years in diameter and contains much more mass than all the stars in the Milky Way combined. Dark matter remains one of the greatest mysteries of modern physics. We don't know what it's made of or how it interacts with the universe other than through gravity. But we do know that without it, galaxies wouldn't exist at all. It acts as a cosmic shepherd, keeping visible matter together and helping to form galactic structures as we know them. Perhaps understanding dark matter is the key to our future travels between the stars. As we push beyond the dark matter halo, we begin to leave the Milky Way's boundaries for good. But that doesn't mean we've entered total emptiness. Intergalactic space still holds surprises, and some are much closer than we imagine. Every now and then, we might come across rogue stars wandering through space, like lone wolves that were expelled from or drifted away from their original galaxy. These are fascinating objects, but very hard to track. The vastness between galaxies is like a silent ocean, where these stars sail alone. But not far ahead, we begin to encounter our nearest cosmic neighbors, the dwarf galaxies that orbit the Milky Way, 
According to astronomers, at least 59 of these galaxies have already been identified as satellites of our galaxy, and the most famous of them without a doubt are the Magellanic Clouds, visible to the naked eye in the southern hemisphere's night sky. The large Magellanic Cloud lies just 100 Ti 63,000 light years from Earth, which in cosmic terms is basically next door. It has a diameter of about 14,000 light years and hosts around 30 billion stars. Unsurprisingly, it's the fourth largest galaxy in the so-called local group, behind only Andromeda, the Milky Way itself, and the Triangulum Galaxy. What's interesting is that its structure looks quite a bit like the Milky Way's. Spiral arms, a central bar, an active star formation. But there's hidden tension in this neighborhood. It appears the Milky Way is gradually stealing material from the large Magellanic Cloud. Some scientists believe that smaller dwarf galaxies currently orbiting the Milky Way may have originally been satellites of the large Magellanic Cloud, pulled in by our galaxy's gravity. Right next to it, we find the small Magellanic Cloud, farther away, about 200,000 light years from Earth, and also smaller in size. It holds about 1 billion stars and has an irregular, almost chaotic shape, unlike the organized spiral of its larger sibling. Both, however, are wrapped in a cloud of molecular hydrogen, suggesting they may have been gravitationally interacting with each other for billions of years. And according to astronomers' projections, the fate of these galaxies is already set. Both the large and small Magellanic clouds will eventually be absorbed by the Milky Way. But the cycle doesn't end there. Further ahead in time, the one to be consumed is the Milky Way itself, which will collide and merge with its cosmic rival, the Andromeda Galaxy. Before we go that far, there are still other dwarf galaxies to visit. One of them is Leo I, a rather faint and distant satellite galaxy located about 820,000 light years from Earth. It's so dim that it's difficult to observe, since it appears near the bright star Regulus in the constellation Leo. Even so, studies reveal that Leo the Fur holds a significant number of stars, which seem to have formed almost simultaneously billions of years ago. Since then, it appears to have gone dormant, with no recent star formation. These dwarf galaxies might seem insignificant compared to the vastness of the universe, but they play a crucial role in the formation and evolution of larger galaxies. They're like small pieces in a gigantic cosmic game, feeding, colliding, and altering the structure of much larger systems. And inevitably, as we drift even farther out, we begin to glimpse the true backdrop of the universe. Just a few million light years away, massive galaxies emerge, like Andromeda, with its own satellite galaxies. Farther out still, we see galactic clusters, galaxy walls, and colossal filaments that make up the cosmic web, the large-scale structure of the universe. These gigantic groupings, connected like veins in an immense network, are the fundamental building blocks of the cosmos. But that's a topic for another journey, maybe in a future episode on the channel. For now, it's time to head back. As we leave behind the dwarf galaxies and the first signs of intergalactic space, it's hard to shake a strange feeling, like we're floating in absolute unknown. If it's already difficult to pinpoint our location within the Milky Way, imagine what it's like outside of it, where there's no clear gravitational center pulling us in or any nearby visual reference. It's like walking through a forest without trails, surrounded by trees so far apart that you can barely see the next one. Only in this case, the trees are galaxies, and the distances are measured in millions of light years. Still, the journey isn't empty. Every distant point of light we see is a clue to the origin and future of the universe. And then comes an inevitable thought. With so many galaxies out there, orbiting, colliding, and interacting with one another, are we truly alone? Or could it be that somewhere in those distant structures, other forms of life are asking themselves the same questions. It might sound like daydreaming, but this is exactly the kind of question that drives science. After all, the mere existence of other galaxies, each with billions or even trillions of stars, makes the possibility of life beyond Earth statistically plausible. And that in itself is incredible. And just like any good explorer, we know that this journey never really ends. There will always be something new to discover, a theory to revise, a star to observe, and as long as that's true, we'll be right here, exploring space, dreaming about what lies beyond, and sharing those discoveries with you. So if you enjoyed this journey, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next adventures. Hit the notification bell to stay updated. And of course, share this with that curious friend who loves to talk about the universe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.